Welcome to an example on how to find the general solution to a linear second order non-homogeneous differential equation using the method of undetermined coefficients. In the given question, we're asked to use undetermined coefficients to find a particular solution to the given differential equation. So for this question, we'll only be entering the particular solution given by y sub p of t, even though we'll go through the entire process to find the general solution which is in the form y of t equals y sub c of t plus big y sub p of t. This big y sub p of t is the same as this y sub p of t, where y sub c of t is the complementary function, which we find by determining the solution to the corresponding homogeneous differential equation, and then to find a particular solution, big y sub p of t, we first guess the form of a particular solution with undetermined coefficients, and then we use that function and its derivatives to perform substitution into the differential equation and then solve for the undetermined coefficients. By doing this, we find big Y sub P of T, a particular solution. And then we can form the general solution by determining this sum. So the first step again is to solve the corresponding homogeneous differential equation, which is Y double prime minus four Y prime plus four y equals zero. We can solve this homogeneous differential equation using the characteristic equation ar squared plus br plus c equals zero, where a equals one, b equals negative four, and c equals positive four. So we have r squared minus four r plus four equals zero. We can solve this by factoring. Factors of r squared the factors of four that add to negative four are negative two and negative two. Notice how we have two real equal roots, so we can just say r equals two with multiplicity two. Remember, when the characteristic equation has two real equal roots, the general solution is in this form, which means this is the form of the complementary function to the given non-homogeneous differential equation. So because r equals two, the complementary function is y sub c of t equals c sub one times e raised to the power of two t plus c sub two times t times e raised to the power of two t. So we'll use this function again later when forming the general solution. But now we're going to determining a particular solution. So step two, we guess the form of a particular solution with undetermined coefficients and because the right side often referred to as g of t, is a quadratic function. That means big Y sub p of t would be a quadratic function with undetermined coefficients, which means it'd be in the form of a t squared plus b t plus c. This form of a function would satisfy this differential equation, meaning its second derivative minus four times its first derivative plus four times the original function would be equal to this quadratic function on the right. We just don't know what the coefficients would be. Before we perform substitution in step three, we need to find the first and second derivative of big Y sub P of T. So the first derivative would be equal to two AT plus B, and the second derivative would be equal to two A. So now we'll take these three functions, perform substitution into the differential equation in order to find the values of a, b, and c. Once we find the values of a, b, and c, we'll have a particular solution. Let's do this on the next slide. Performing substitution, we begin with y double prime, which would be two a, minus four times y prime, which would be two a t plus b, and then plus four times original function, which would be four times a t squared plus b t plus c, and this must equal two t squared plus six t plus two. So for our next step, let's look at the parentheses. So we have two a minus eight a t minus four b, and then plus four a t squared plus four b t, plus four c, again equals two t squared plus six t plus two. Let's go ahead and rearrange the order of the terms on the left. 
let's split them in descending order using the exponents on t. So we have four at squared, and then we have minus eight at. Let's make sure we get all the terms. We already took care of that term and this term. Then we have plus four bt. The remaining terms are constants. So we have plus two a minus four b plus four c equals two t squared plus six t plus two. Now let's do one last thing here. Let's write this as four a t squared. Now for the t term, let's factor out the t. So we'd have plus t times the quantity negative eight a plus four b, and these three terms are constants. And now let's equate the coefficients. Looking at the t squared terms, we would have four a must equal two. Looking at the t terms, we'd have negative eight a plus four b must equal six. And finally looking at the constant terms, two a minus four b plus four c must equal two. Let's write out these equations. Again, we have four a equals two, negative eight a plus four b equals six, and two a minus four b plus four c equals two. Let's solve the system of equations on the next slide. So looking at equation one, if we divide both sides by four, we know that a equals one half. For equation two, if we substitute one half for a, we'd have negative eight times one half, that's negative four, plus four b equals six. Adding four to both sides, we'd have four b equals 10. Dividing both sides by four, we'd have b equals 10 fourths or five halves. So now we know a equals one half, b equals five halves, and now we can find c using equation three. So using equation three, we'd have two times one half minus four times five halves plus four c equals two. So we have one, this would be minus 20 halves or minus 10 plus four c equals two. So this is negative nine, adding nine to both sides. We have four c equals 11. So c equals 11 fourths. So finally, now that we know the values of a, b, and c, we have a particular solution. Going back to the previous slide, we now know a particular solution, big Y sub P of T is equal to, again, A is one half, so we'd have one half T squared. B is five halves, so plus five halves T, and C is 11 fourths. So this is actually what our question is asking us for, the particular solution, Y sub P of T. But again, we can use this function and the complementary function to form the general solution, which we'll do in just a moment. So let's go ahead and enter y sub p of t. And now let's form the general solution given by y of t. The general solution would be y of t equals the complementary function, which was c sub one e to the two t plus c sub two t e to the two t and then plus the particular solution that we found, which is plus one half t squared plus five halves t plus 11 fourths. So again, this question doesn't ask, but this would be the general solution. I hope you found this helpful.